Welcome to this podcast is making me thirsty. The number one destination for Seinfeld fans. This is two up and two down. Here's our producer, Chris, to start us off. All right, thirsty fans, welcome back. And today we have another episode of two up, two down, and we are going to discuss the pitch and the ticket. So Chris, start us off with your uh, first up. Yeah, the pitch and the ticket, and folks, we the way we analyze this is as it aired, and then these two episodes aired together as one on September 16th, back in 92. Uh, 17 and a half million people watched this. Larry David, written episode, you know the deal, two ups, two downs, across the board, we treat this episode as one. Man, there's a lot here. I, uh, I tell you, the scene with, with Jerry and George back at NBC in the lobby, George so nervous. And, uh, you know, what's the matter with you? This is your idea. What idea? I just said something. I didn't expect you to. And then obviously they're, they're going into the room. They're men with jobs, Jerry. You know, who are they? You know, that whole scene, getting to the back room, then bicker with each other. Who are they? You know. Unbelievable stuff. Men with jobs, Jerry. Obviously, uh, Tony references his line all the time, um, and just and it just his confidence. Just this is uh, the yo-yo of George Costanza, right? Just he could bullshit with the best of them, but when push comes to shove, uh, he, nervous as can be, no confidence, right? That's what's really inside him. So love it. First up. All right, yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, good stuff there with George and uh, Tony. Over to you. What's your first up? I mean, that is an all-time scene for me. It's one of the greatest scenes in the history of the show. Obviously, it sums it all up perfectly. I mean, it blew my mind. Then every time I watch it, O'Hara just hit it, hit it all right there. They wear suits and ties. They're married. They have secretaries. The great line. Uh, you know, they, 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 when they find that they're gonna have water, that's ah, pretty good. They'll give us water in there, okay? He's all they, he brings them down a little bit. Le- unbelievable. Uh, I, I'm gonna kind of uh, keep it going a little bit, um, uh, around the same realm. Um, there's just so much here because it's an hour long episode, but I, I think that I have to use this as my first stop. The introduction to Crazy Joe Davola, I mean. It doesn't get better than this. Aside from Estelle's first first few lines in the history of the show, her introduction with uh, you know you know interaction in, in the hospital bed there with George in the contest, this crazy Joe Davola, I mean, you're under no obligation to shake my hand. That's how this guy is introduced to us. Are you kidding me? Who? who what are we doing? Incredible line. You know why shouldn't I look good? You want to hit me? I mean, everything Davola says is just incredible. I mean, you know right away who this guy is, what we're dealing with, you know, crazy Joe Davola. Oh, my God. Just a- unbelievable introduction to the character that we're going to love throughout this ep- throughout this season, uh, you know, right on through to, to Six Nay, whatever the heck he says there, the Latin. Uh, just unbelievable introduction to a character. I'll have to just reiterate it. You're under no obligation to shake my hand. And then, you know, what, what, you look good. Why shouldn't I look good? <laughs> Then he says, do you want to hit me? Just everything about it. Uh, Davola delivers on all cylinders. Just an introduction to a character you're not expecting to show up at a sitcom. Uh, incredible. Uh, and that's my my first stop. Yeah, that's uh, Peter Crombie playing Joe Davola. Uh, so great mention there. Uh, may he rest in peace. So, uh, Chris, back to you. What's your uh, second up? Crazy Joe. All-time great. And you can see the fear in Jerry. Uh, and, you know had a race back to Monks to call, to call Kramer, right? <laughs> he should have called right there, by the way, but he doesn't make because he got the phone call from his mother, if I recall. Uh, so you introduced Crazy Joe. I'm going to do the introduction of Russell Dalrymple, okay? The, uh, <laughs> obviously, George, I mean, this, what a scene. I mean, George taking him through the premise of the show, obviously, and, and Russell, you read on the show? Yeah, that's a show. You read. <laughs> I mean, what did you do today? George taking him through the show after the nervousness I just mentioned is unbelievable, right? Um, and then obviously, well, you know, hit Russell's classic line, why am I watching it? Because it's on TV. Not yet. And then obviously the the nail in the coffin, the, the cherry on top, whatever you want to call it. You know, I pray, you know, this podcast, I pride this line, we pride ourselves, you know. The artistic integrity line, 
this is the show. And I'm not. Well, we're not going to change it. I mean, the the balls of George to do this to the president of NBC, who we just met, was just unbelievable. But that's but that just that's the show within the show, and that's Larry and Jerry, and that's they stuck to their guns. They don't give a crap who the hell they're talking to, right? We talked with Matt Goldman. They wouldn't even let Larry in these meetings. I mean, the thing that I remember most about being there is Larry was not allowed to go to network meetings at NBC because he was too volatile. <laughs> so <laughs> this was before Larry Charles was on board. So they just brought me to have another body in the room. Um, it's me and Jerry and the Castle Rock execs. Maybe Tom Sharonis was there. I don't remember. But Jerry pitched out like the next clump of shows we were going to do. And NBC said, well, we don't think you should do those. We think you should do these other things that were not good. And Jerry listened patiently. And he said, I hear you. We're not going to do those. And NBC said, uh, the acting president said, I'm the president of the network. This is my note. I think you should seriously consider it. And Jerry said, we're going to do the show we want to do. If you don't like it, please cancel us. I'm very happy being a stand-up for the rest of my life. And seeing that, sitting right next to him when he said it, and with the calmness and the confidence he and the truth that he said that with, like you can't get a better, better education than that. Um, it was really lovely to see. But but Jerry was kind of that take charge guy that George represented here. Um, it just made me feel proud because of what we're doing today. And I mean, just as as good as it gets in the whole run. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, and Matt Goldman, a writer on the show, he he was there at the time. Uh, yeah, so he could attest to that story. So yeah, thanks, uh, Tony. Over to you. What's your second up? Uh, yeah, O'Hara gave his two ups, so I might go a little off on this one a little bit, but I'll stick to at least an up here. But I mean, just to piggyback off some of that stuff, I mean, La Cucina, uh, Mexican chef Pepe, I mean, <laughs> he just cuts Jerry off and then just O'Hara says, just takes charge. Like, I can sum up the show in one word after he talks about the La Cucina stuff. Uh, just incredible. Uh, I'm not even going to go to the, 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 when they actually go, you know, with, without, without a story, you know, it's otherwise it's just masturbation, uh, business, let's do business. You want to do business? Let's do business. But anyway, that's not even my up. I just had the piggyback of all that, the pitch stuff, but, uh, I'm going to do, uh, the back at monks after the artistic integrity lied, uh, an all timer from Jerry, uh, you're not artistic and you have no integrity. Uh, you know, you need to you need you need to go to Vienna. You need a team working on you around the clock, thinking about you, you know, talking about you. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about once a week here. You know, George is sitting. Then George is like, thought the woman was cute. You know, a little throwback to the Nazi stuff. Like he just George is just back to the woman. You know, there was a woman in the room. I met her. We had some chemistry. I don't meet that many women. You know, that's where he's at. And Jerry's all, you know, we just blew the whole deal yelling at him about it. Uh, another classic George there. About just, you know, it's all you could think about is like, you know what? Now I'm thinking about it. the woman's kind of cute. She said hi to me. I don't know. I got a shot. I'm already introduced to her. Um, unbelievable. Uh, great back amongst conversation. Just leads with, you know, you're not artistic and you have no integrity. Uh, just incredible scene. Uh, that's my my second up. It's a great, good line there. So uh, thanks, Tony. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, that's the, all the ups that we we have for, for a two-parter episode pretty much. So we're going to start the downs. And Chris, what's your first? Yeah, for the downs, for the pitch and the ticket, I'm going to just focus on the two Elaine scenes. Like, kind of just like throwaways with, uh, you know, the psychologist there. They're just kissing at two different points in Paris. I get I think she was pregnant. They, they didn't. She wasn't on set, the whole thing. But just... And I don't know. I guess she had to get a paycheck for those episodes. Whatever the case may be, I just don't think it was needed. And even the, the uh, was it Dr. Uh, Reston? Did I get his name right? Oh, so, you know, I'm thinking about a obviously crazy Joe. I don't know. It felt, it just didn't feel that like it was needed. I mean, this, again, it's an hour episode. So, you know, that, you know, it's not the boyfriend where an hour episode is super tight. I think there's a little looseness. And I think the, the two Elaine scenes just didn't didn't really add up for me. So that's Elaine's my first down. 
All right. Thank you, Chris. And Tony, over to you. Your first down, please. Yeah, totally agree with that. And we'll, we'll get to that. I mean, as much as we love this, I think there there are some downs. And I think, uh, you know, I'm going to go with the other one. I wrote that down too, but my other one is, is definitely the Newman and Kramer stuff. Um, uh, the, the courtroom case stuff, I uh, couldn't be a banker. I, I don't know, man. I never, never got that whole thing. I never will get it. I, I it just so silly and just, it doesn't have to do with anything. I mean, Kramer wearing the helmet, he gets kicked in the head. Is, is that why we're doing this whole, I don't know. I just, you know, the Palisades Parkway shout out earlier by Newman. We got to like, but I just don't like that courtroom scene at all. Um, I don't like anything about it. Uh, it's a big down for me to be honest with you. It's it's the only th- yeah we'll get there, but yeah the the the, the Newman Kramer courtroom scene. I uh, couldn't be a banker, <clears throat> so I was rushing home to, to to console my friend. Got a speeding ticket, the whole thing. Not a fan. Um, to a Harris point, also unnecessary, really. I mean, uh, but listen, they had an hour to fill. They needed to get Kramer to do something here. Um. I'm usually not going to poo-poo Newman, uh, but on this one, I, I got to. That's that's my my first down. I got to agree with you there 100%. I, I, I never really liked those courtroom seeds either with the uh, ticket. So thanks, Tony, for mentioning that. Uh, Chris, over to you. What's your second down? Well, it's funny. Just for you, uh, you know, New Yorkers, and maybe you guys help me out here, but uh, he said he got the ticket on the Palisades, but then when he was in the courtroom, he said he was up in Westchester. So. I'll say it's yeah, not taking it doesn't, make, doesn't make any sense. You're right. It made no sense. So, uh, you know, we know that Marty Rackham, he knows that suffering guy, but we'll get to that some other time. All right. Second down. Yeah. And it's funny. I, I had as, as an up, I, I did like the Kramer Newman, like trade when they were trading this stuff, you get ripped off the whole thing. And, you know, it, it's karma Kramer. That whole bit was great, but but then Kramer with the one pant leg and then shaving one side of his head, like, you know, and again, I'm judging it as season four, but sometimes we look ahead. That's like season eight Kramer stuff. You know what I mean? Shaving one part of your face. I don't know. For me, that that never felt right. I know he got hit in the head, but come on, you're not going to put your leg, your pants leg on? Seemed a little silly. And I know he's silly, silly neighbor, but <laughs> that was just a little too much, uh, which rarely happens in season four. Uh, listen, not the worst thing. Believe me, you're not, you're not, I'm not shutting that scene off, but the one pant leg, second down. All right, yeah, good, good mention there. Uh, so, Tony, what's your second down here? Yeah, that was going to be one of my second down, and that's a great one. And and it's the same with the ball hit, getting hit with the ball in the head and the letter, and he forgets people's names, and the same as the Mary Tyler Moore thing. Three of those Kramer knocks in the head things is enough for me. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't a big fan of that either. That was my next down. Mary Listen, Hart. The, Mary Hart, not Mary, Mary Hart. Hart. What did I say? Mary Tyler Moore? <laughs> I'll keep it in. I'll, I'll keep that in. Uh, yeah, Listen. Those were the two big downs for me. This next down is really a throwaway, and it's probably going to irk a lot of people because I think a lot of people love this line. I think it's a cheap laugh. I think it doesn't make any sense. It's not necessary. Uh, the whole when J- Jerry gets the phone call from the telemarketer, how about you give me your number and I'll call you later? Oh, I guess there are people calling you at home. Now you know how I feel. Just a stupid non sequitur thrown in there for a cheap laugh. Everyone eats that one up. I don't like it at all. It makes no sense either. Like, oh, I guess you don't feel like calling you at home, do you? Like, where else are you going to call someone? Like, people call him at home all the time. It, 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 he, it's a joke he tried to force in. It's not funny. Uh, come at me in the comments. I don't like it. That's my down. It's a quick one. Uh, I only got three written down. We, I gave one of mine. Or I took my other one. Uh, so, yeah, that's my second down is the, uh, the, the silly, uh, Jerry joke on the phone, on the telemarketer phone call. Well, there you go, Tony. It's your show. It's your down. So stick with it. Uh, so Chris, uh, we're going to wrap everything up now with your grades and final thoughts here. What do, what do you got? Yeah. So listen, you knew Tony was going to be, as an analyst, he is consistent. He hates that Jerry stuff. Like the New York times, the call, da, da, da. If he's tapping on it, a lot of Jerry, like, extras tony's tough on but he's consistent like there's no nonsense here okay all right back to the grade 
All right, a few downs there. Uh, second half dragged a little bit. Okay. But, I mean, we mentioned some all. I mean, the men with jobs, Jerry, secretaries, that 45 sec to 60 seconds could be top five all time for me. And, and then in, 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 in the boardroom there with, with Russell, twice. Unbelievable stuff. That's the business. Uh, you mentioned Crazy Joe. The Ted Danson stuff. You're a nobody. He's a somebody. I mean, uh, unbelievable. Kramer Newman, I mentioned a little bit before. The, the helmet, the radar detector. All right. You know, the, the courtroom stuff. Like I said, that was kind of second half dragged on. Uh, oh, forget about it. Jerry and George, the, the salsa conversation, right? This should be the show. We didn't even get to that. I mean, that was the foundation of everything. And that's how we think in, in some degree that it did happen. Obviously, uh, Jerry and Larry's was a little different with the Korean Deli whole thing. Um, and I loved, I loved, uh, George just kind of tried to dive in here, right? Like in real life, obviously, Jerry sought out Larry because he was a comedian. This is just his buddy. <laughs> You're not a writer, writer. It's a sitcom. <laughs> I mean, I mean, such good stuff. Uh, Uncle Leo, I didn't mention Uncle Leo. You, you can't sleep on Uncle Leo here a little bit. You know, go ahead, go to your, go to your thing. And, oh, my God. I mean, all right. Just so much there. But it's not AA+. Plus be, be, because of the hour and because I think the ticket part of it did slow it down. But the other stuff is so strong. That as an hour, I'm giving the full hour an A minus. Uh, I mean, it's season four. I, it's it's hard to even go below that ever. But for me, it's fair based on the totality of this episode. Very good uh, uh, analysis there, Chris. Uh, so yeah, A minus I think is well deserved. Uh, Tony, over to you. Uh, what do you got for your uh, final thoughts and grade? Yeah, he's spot on. I, spot on. I wrote a lot of this stuff down. Hour long question mark. If it was, if if they took Newman and and Kramer out of it, they took Elaine's two scenes he mentioned earlier out of it, and just made it the two pitch scenes and then the, and the waiting room stuff and the salsa conversation. This is an A plus all time or twenty two minutes done. It's unbelievable. But you, you got to look at the totality, like O'Hara said. You got to look at the totality. The Kramer and Newman stuff in the courtroom brings it down. You have no real Elaine. O'Hara always mentions all four and all four cylinders. You're not getting anything from Elaine. Uh, you, you do have Crazy Joe. You got Stu Charmack. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, th those guys are great. Kevin Page and Jake Crespi. Uh, unbelievable. The salsa conversation. People like to say salsa. Very Albert Costello routine they got going on there back and forth. Oh, I mentioned the great, uh, you know, George, we go into NBC all of a sudden, you know, the, you know the, George just brings himself into it. Uh, when they come out of the meeting, they're so excited. They're, you know, they're, and we did it, you know, they're all like, let's do business, do business. Uh, artistic integrity, uh, the crazy Joe stuff, La Cucina, you, you said it all. And I totally agree. It could so very well be an A plus episode if, if we just, not, if we just cut off all the fat, but, they didn't. They gave us an hour, and because of that, I I agree with the grade. I have the same grade, an A minus. It, you know, I couldn't go to a B plus. That's insanity. Uh, and and I just don't think it makes it any higher with with the totality of of, of the episode. It's a shame because it's so good. The men with jobs stuff is so good, but uh, I, I'm on. I'm on the same grade. I got an A minus for uh, the pitch and the ticket. Oh, and a great wrap up there. Uh, yeah, and, and I'm glad you mentioned Crespi and, and Shermack. Uh, of course, we had our uh, a great interview with Kevin Page, who played uh, Stu Shermack. So, hope people check out that one if they haven't uh, on our podcast. So, gentlemen, thanks again, and hope everybody tunes in for our next episode.